watching us on video. Um, Mr. H's video today is going to be about spiral math for Tuesday, August 11th, and we're going to be going over that spiral math right now. Um, while we're doing our spiral math, if you have questions, you can raise your hand. Um, I may not be able to get to it right away while I'm going over one part of the spiral math, but I will try to answer. I will answer them when I see them up there. Um, if there's a longer question where it's something you're really not sure about, just go ahead and email me and we'll be able to discuss it, um, you know, offline, maybe during our office hour today, if there's something where you're really, really stuck on it. Let's go ahead and begin with number one. What I'm going to do is, uh, Ms. Church has got her uh, our, um, popsicle stick jar right there, and um, I'm going to go and ask her if she could shake it up. And just when I call your name, if you could read to me the Tuesday spiral math question number one that you see on your screen. Reagan. Reagan, do you want to go ahead and uh, unmute your microphone? And could you read that loud and proud for me so we can hear it? Do you want me to say the answer with it or just say blank? Um, actually, instead of giving me the answer sentence, I just want you to tell me what the whole pro read the whole thing, and then I'm going to ask someone else for an answer sentence idea, okay? Okay. So okay. You, just, you read the question, like the Thompson family's traveling. Just read it that way for me. Okay. The Thompson family will drive blank for blank days that, and that's blank. Reagan, Reagan, Reagan. That's our answer sentence, and that's great. But I want you to see right where it says number one right there. I want you to actually read the question, all of it. The, oh. whole, the Thompson family's traveling. Does that make sense now? Yes, thank okay. you. All right, no worries. Go ahead and give it a try. The Thompson family is traveling 1,500 miles to visit relatives. They plan to drive the same distance each day. If the Thompson make, if the Thompsons make the trip in three days, how far will they drive each day? If they make the trip in five days, how far will they drive each day? Wonderful job. What we're going to do here, and Reagan, when you read that, I noticed that there were actually two questions here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do two answer sentences. So, and I'd like one person to read their idea of the answer sentence, and I'll go ahead and put it here if it makes sense. If not, I may just have to ask, see if you can clarify. Um, we're going to put it over here and uh, let's go ahead and ask one person to read the an first answer sentence, just leaving it blank and then we'll work out the answer. Go ahead for me, please, Miss Church. Maisie. Maisie, um, I think you're here. Why don't you go ahead and um, unmute your microphone and tell me the first answer sentence, but like Reagan did, just leave the answer number blank. So like blank. Maisie, I see that you're here. Just make sure you unmute your microphone and um, go ahead and let me know what you would put for your answer sentence. There we go. Okay, Maisie, you ready? Yeah. Thompson family would travel blank days or blank miles in three days. Perfect. Let's, let's 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 do that first answer sentence. Let me write that down so we can see it. So nice job. So say it to me again. The first answer sense. The Thompson family, or yeah, the Thompson family would drive blank miles in three days. Okay, so I'll put the Thompson family will drive blank miles in three days. And that is pretty much exactly how I would have written it. So nice job. Um, some of the key things that you should have or must have in the answer sense, you want to have drive, miles, three, and days. Um, you could have said, since there's only one family, you could say they will drive or the Thompsons. That's not as big of a deal, but you do need these keywords of drive, miles, three days. Uh, Gabby, you have a question? Yes, um, I made mine one big sentence and just combined it with the word and. And that's fine too. And actually, you know what? We might just do that as a, as another way. If you get it as two separate answer sentences, that's fine. I really like that way of combining it so it's not as long. So we can do that too. And I'm going to go ahead and leave that. And Gabby, do you want to tell me how I would do that? If let's say, look at the sentence right here. I've got the Thompson family will drive blank miles in three days. And how would you finish that then as a combined sentence? Maisie, thank you. Go ahead and mute your camera. You mute your microphone now. And blank miles each day for five days. Okay. And 
blank miles and I might just say like this and blank miles in five days. That's great. Thank you, Gabby. All right, so we've got and on that second part of it, you will also need miles and you also need five and you'll need days. Make sure you check those. The reason why I like you to check each part of that because I really want to make sure you didn't leave out any of those keywords in the answer sentence. Let's go and take a look at our work and I'm going to go ahead and just make sure I know what I'm going to do here. I'll just move this right over here on the side a little bit so you can see it a little bit easier. OK, so it says right here at the Thompson family is traveling 1500 miles. And they're going to be driving the same distance each day. If they make the trip in three days, ooh, that's a lot of driving in three days. So what I would do is I would first make with my um, expression over here and make sure that you're writing it in your um, work section. I would take the 1500 miles and I would first divide it by three. Now, some of you may be able to do that in your head, and that's great, but I do want to see at least the expression right here. Miss Church, can you see that okay? Um, if I have it in that little window like that? Yes. Okay. So 1,500 divided by three is going to equal 500. And you can just show your division out here if you need to. It's kind of a mental math one. I just want to see the expression, 15 divided by three and adding the two zeros. And then what I'll do is I'll put the 500 inside my answer sentence for 300 or for three days. Now I next want to do is I'll take the 1500 and this time I'm going to be dividing it by five days, which is a little bit more reasonable drive day. I don't know, 500 a mile. Well, I'm just, it's a lot of driving. So 1500 divided by five, 15 divided by five is three, add one zero add another zero and you get 300. So the Thompson family will drive 500 miles in three days and 300 miles in five days. Check mark that you got all those answers. And um, I see a hand up. However, it's kind of, let me pull it up here so I can see who's actually got their hand up here. Um, Mike, you got a question? Yeah, I put travel instead of drive. That's going to work OK. That's still one of the words from the answer sentence, so you'll be fine. Just go ahead and check mark that. All right, let's move on down now to number two. And I'd like to go ahead and have, well, I'm going to write here number two. And then Miss Church, could you unpop, pick someone to read what we're doing for number two? Not the answer, just the question. Jace T. Jace T, do you want to go ahead and um, Unmute and just read for me what we're going to be doing, what the question is all about here, starting with after number two. Mrs. Bird wrote the following on the board. OK, great. So she wrote the following on the board. Um, she wrote one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth equals four fifths. And then Jace, underneath that box, there's some more of the question. What did she say? What did it say there? Can you see that right there, Jace? Which equivalent is another way to write the sum of the unit fractions? Nice and loud. Thank you, Jace. Um, which equation is the another way to write the sum of the unit fractions? We've got a question, now we need an answer sentence here. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, what would you say is an answer sentence for this one that I'll write down on my paper? Um, Ms. Church, you wanna spark somebody up to help me with this one? Mike, I notice your hand is still raised. So um, if, do you have a question or does it just need to be put down? Okay, thank Sorry. you. Sorry. No worries, just Derek. checking. Derek, do you wanna go ahead and tell me what we write as an answer sentence, but leave the actual answer blank. And that means um, just tell me how you would answer that with an answer sentence. Derek, I see you're here, but I don't see your microphone unmuted yet. Are you able to unmute your microphone and go ahead and read that answer sentence for me? Answer a sentence for that one. Yeah, we're almost there. Go ahead and read the answer sentence for me. I couldn't figure out an answer sentence. Oh, I, okay. okay. 
um, let me give you a clue on this one. What we would do is we would start here with the word another way. Another way to write the sum of the unit fractions is. So let's start it that way and I'll write this one down. So what you could say is another and Derek, if you're not sure about this one and you didn't get something, just go ahead and write this one down. Another way to write the sum and uh, let me just go ahead and highlight here or uh, zoom in so you guys can see another way to write the sum of the unit fractions is and we want to go ahead now and uh, take a look at what our choices are we don't want to just say another way to write the sum of the unit sum of the unit fractions is a or b or c or d we want to actually write the expression that's in there. So um, I want you to take a look and I want you to tell me what you wrote. I want you to finish that answer sentence for me. So read the answer sentence that I wrote or you wrote and then tell me how you would have answered that. And I want to see if I agree or we uh, disagree on that one. Let's go ahead and uh, Mr. Church, you want to spark somebody up? Ariana, do you want to go ahead and unmute your microphone and tell me what you said? Um, I'm sorry. I couldn't hear you on what you were asking me to talk about. No worries. Just do this on number two, which you see on your screen. It says, which equation is another way to write the sum of the unit fractions? Right over here. I wrote an answer sentence. Another way to write the sum of the unit fractions is. So I need you to go ahead and just finish that answer sentence for me. I said that um, two fifths plus two fifths equals four fifths. Okay, so another way to write the sum of the unit fractions is two fifths plus two fifths equals four fifths. And when I check on that one, that makes total sense. This one kind of tricked me at first because I saw that four fifths there, but then I realized that it doesn't actually add up to four fifths. So what you would do, and you're exactly right, Ariana, you'd go ahead and you'd write here two fifths plus two fifths equals four fifths. Great. All right, we're going to move on now. Jace P, do you want to go ahead and uh, tell me what your question is? Hello. Another way to write the sum is two fifths um, plus two fifths equals four fifths. That's pretty good. I, I would like next time maybe to have those words, the sum of the unit fractions, just so we know what specifically we're talking about there. It's not wrong right now, but just if next time you add a little more detail, the answer sense, that makes it even better. Gabby? I wrote a different answer sentence too. I just added in the beginning the equation that is another way. That's fine too. Adding extra detail to it is fine. All right, we're going to go ahead and um, move on to number three. Jace P, if you have your hand up, just go ahead and take it down unless you have another question. Thank you, Jace. OK, we're going to go on to number three. And um, Ms. Church, who should be reading number three for me, please? Aubrey, do you want to go ahead and read the question for number three for me? Sure. Um, the table below shows the number of fruits sold at the farmer's market. Okay, great. And go on down to here. Which fruit sold the least amount? Perfect. Thank you. Great job. So we're going to go ahead and um, turn that into an answer sentence now. Um, we're going to use this question that Aubrey just read right here into an answer sentence. So how would you say that as an answer sentence, but leaving the um, actual answer out? Michael. Mike, do you want to go ahead and tell me what you said? I or, put the fruit that sold the least are blank. OK, that's good. Let me write that down. Derek, you want to go ahead and meet your project, unmute your microphone? And answer your question or ask your question? Uh, no, I was just going to say Wait, one for that one because two? I didn't do the other one. Wait, no. This okay. One. So the least amount 
R. And since they're plural, good job, Mike, for recognizing there's going to be a R there. I'm going to leave that blank. All right, so the fruit that sold the least amount R. And um, on this one, you get a little bit of a break on having to line those uh, numbers up because they're already done for you on the screen. They went ahead and lined them up pretty well, so there's really no need for you to do it, but that way you can just compare your, yep, they're lined up perfectly, so I don't have to write them again. If you line them up on your paper and line them up, that's fine too. But since they're pretty much perfectly lined up, you can just use what's on the screen here. Um, based on what you're seeing here, what would you say is the fruit that sold the least amount? Um, let me go ahead and if you could unmute your microphone. Jack. Jack. I have a Jack. Jackson. Oh, Jackson. Um, I would say oranges sold the least amount. All right. It looks like as I draw and compare here, 14,000 is less. Yep. That makes sense. So yeah, let's go ahead over here. Oranges. Nice job, Jack. Is it Jack or Jackson? Um, Jack. All right, Jack. So you shall be. Mr. Trix was right. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go ahead and uh, move on down to number four now. All right. Uh, let's. This one's got a lot of words, so I'm just going to move it out of the way so you can see it all. Um, basically, I'd like you to start right here and read that sparse first part for me. Um, go ahead and um, unmute your microphone. Abby. Abby. Oh, by the way, put them back in the jar because that way they can be picked again. Okay. Just in case. Abby. I was at the keep it random so you never know. Abby, do you have your microphone? Abby, you there? Um, which question are we on? Hi, Abby. We're on number four, but if you notice here, number four has got a few words right above it. If you can see my screen, are you having trouble seeing my screen, right? Or can you see it? Um, I'm having a hard time hearing you. Okay. That might be a connection issue right now um because usually i'm pretty loud here in the classroom right now so if there's something you're having trouble with the recording uh, later on should be pretty loud for you to go over it um so i'll read this out loud it's use the table below to solve the book lost three most popular books are mary's lamb bees knees and cats meow how many copies of mary's lamb would the bookstore sell in one year go ahead and do an answer sentence for this one and um what do you think Casey, why don't you tell me what our answer sense is going to be? Casey, if you can, I, there you go. Can we tell what you said for your answer sentence right here? Um, I don't have one yet. Well, let's take a look at it right now, Casey. Um, I'll give you a hint here. It says how many copies of Mary's Lamb would the bookstore sell in one year? So you could say the bookstore would sell. Maybe you could finish it from there. So if I said the bookstore would sell, how would you finish it? The bookstore would sell blank books per, per year. Yeah, you could say the bookstore would sell blank books per year. Even better with that probably would be to say the bookstore would sell blank copies of Mary's Lamb in one year. Because yeah. that way we want to make sure that we're talking about the actual, because there's three different books there. So by adding Mary's Lamb in there, we know that we're not confusing with Bees Knees or um, Cat's Meow. Um, so we'll go ahead right here. And I'm going to, Put that answer sentence in there. You could say the bookstore. Would sell. And I'm going to leave blank copies. Of bees. And I'll capitalize that. Oh, not bees knees. Mary's lamb. In one year. And I'll zoom on that so you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. Make sure you have all, and I'll show you the parts I really want you to have in here. I'll put a period at the end. Abby, you have a question? I wrote, 
A Mary's lamb is sold blank times per year. That's good. As long as you got the title Mary's lamb one year, copies would be good too. But if you just said they will sell the book in one year, that's fine too. Some of the answer sentences are a little variable. There's a couple required words. I really want to have book or copies. Mary's lamb has to be in there and the word one year. So those are good. Jace B, you have a question? I wrote um, Mary's Lamb sells 240 40 copies in a year instead of the bookstore sells 200. And that's fine too. As long as you've got the words copies, Mary's Lamb, one year, bookstore. Okay, if you said it that way, that's fine. So you're okay, Jason. Um, let's go ahead right now. And uh, on this one, let's take a look. You should have your work on this side right here. You should have taken Mary's Lamb and put down that there's 20, because it looks like right here it orders 20. They have 20 books per month. And I'm going to write that 20 right here. And then my super hint was that there's 12 months per year. So what I'm going to do is multiply that by 12. So it's 20 times 12. And now my super fancy lines are getting in the way. So I'm going to clear them out. So 20 times 12, I can do some mental math or I can multiply it out. 2 times 20 or 2 times 12 is 24. Add a zero and get 240. So I ended up with the bookstore would sell 240 copies of Mary's Lamb in one year. Make sure you check your work right here. Abby, you still have a question? Jace, do you still have a question or your hand still raised? I'm going to go ahead and flip over over here. And uh, we'll go on to number five. Since I don't have room on this side, I'm going to go to the back. If you're on your back page, also just make sure it's got answer and work on each side. So I have a separation between the two sections. Maisie, Maisie. thank you, Ms. Church. Maisie, you got your hand raised. What's your question? I wrote the book Mary's Lamb would sell 240 copies in one year slash 12 months. Well, I think that'll work. Yeah, that's the same thing. Yeah, that'll be fine. Thank you. No, you see that, Mr. Church? That's perfect. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put number five. And um, I want to go ahead and I'd like someone to read the actual question for number five, and then I'm going to pick someone else to tell me the answer sentence for that. So we have number five right here. Make sure you're looking at your screen. Maisie, um, do you want to go ahead and put your hand down if you still have your question answered? Okay, Riley, you want to go ahead and read the question for me? I can't see it. Okay, do you see it on your screen right now where I'm kind of like having a little number five and there's like I'm pushing a little button on it to make it like sort of highlight it right there? Oh, yeah. Okay. There you go. The combined angle measure is 80 degrees. Find the unknown angle. Great job on that one. All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, I'd like to get an answer sentence for this one. So let's go ahead and. Um, Reagan, go ahead and tell me the answer sentence you would have written. I wrote the unknown angle is what? blank. Great. So let me write this down here, just like Reagan said it. The unknown angle. And make sure you have an answer sentence here that includes the words unknown angle. And I forget who told me yesterday to uh, make sure I don't spell it as angel. Thanks for the pro tip. And... Uh, is that you, Michael? Yeah. Yeah, thanks. I've done that before. The unknown angle is, we're going to put blank, and I'm going to use a period here at the end, and I'm going to use a little degree sign, that little tiny circle up at the top, because I want to make sure I label that as degrees. So I'll do that right there. And then um, I'm going to go and take a look at what I did, I, um, well, let me show the work. Let me see what you um, said for that answer, and then I'll show you how I got the answer or work on that one that you need to show. So who would we pick to show me the, tell me the answer here and fill it in? Allison. Allison, you want to go ahead and um, answer that one for me? Can you hear me? I can. Okay. Um, I got the unknown angle is 60 degrees. Perfect, and I like how you use the word or the word degrees right after. Carter, do you have a question, or is that Casey? I can't tell. I see CJ there. Oh, is that Carter? Do you have your Carter? Go ahead. And yeah. Just... Yeah. Um, 
on the work side, I yeah. put like the actual angle also. Okay. Like I drew it. Oh, and that's fine. If you actually want to take this and okay. draw it out, that's actually super cool to do. Um, you could take this and you know just draw it out over on your work side right here. That's totally fine. Um, what I'm going to do, Carter, is I'll show you what I did for my work. You at least, boys and girls, have to have something like this. You want to take, um, since we know that the angle is 80 degrees right here, we could say that um, 20 degrees plus a mystery degrees, we don't know what the X is, is going to end up equaling 80 degrees. And you could do that, or you could do 80 degrees minus 20 degrees equals X degrees. Any sort of expression like that sort of shows us how you figured it out is perfect. So I want you to check mark your work right there and make sure you also have, and let me get some of this out of the way so you can see it. I also want you to make sure that you have the word unknown and angle and 60 and degrees. Maisie, what's your question? I did, um, like on the work side, I did uh, 80 minus 20 equals 60 degrees or 80 degrees minus 60 degrees. Equals. Oh, yeah, and that's fine. Um, when you show your work like that, there's, especially in a problem like this, there's different ways you can show it. I just want to know how you figured it out. So that's perfect what you did, showing me how you figured it out, Maisie. OK, we're going to move on down to number six. Um, go ahead and would you read it out for me, please? Abby. Abby, you want to go ahead? Choose whether the number is prime composite or neither. Uh, um, before I go into the answer sentence, um, Riley, do you have a question? Oh, um, no, I accidentally pressed the button. Okay, just go ahead and um, there you go. Just un, un, there you go. Thank you, guys. All right, uh, how about an answer sentence for this one, please? Um, what would we say for number six? I'll go ahead and write number six. Hunter, do you want to tell me what you would say as the answer sentence? So leaving that uh, answer actually blank, but just tell me what you'd write for the answer sentence. The number is blank because. Oh, I love that. That because is great. If you did that, um, I'm going to put blank here in the number. Is I'm going to put blank right here. If you actually used because and explained it um, normally in the classroom, and we may start doing that. Um, that's kind of a freebie. It gives you a star. I mean, um, when you get a star like that, when you add something extra that sort of goes above and beyond the answer, you're going to explain it for me, like using a because right there. Some days those become star days. That means that anything after the because is an extra credit. So because you get one star here, Hunter, that means when we actually start turning these in, or we want to do 100% day, which was probably what we're going to be doing next week. I want to check to see who's got 100%. Maybe you got everything wrong, or not everything wrong, but one wrong, but then you got this star that saves it for you. So you have an actually um, one extra credit point. So nice job, my friend. Jace T, you want to go ahead and tell me what your question is? When is the next time we're going to play Minecraft? Chase, that's a great question for later on. So we'll go ahead and answer that after we're done with our spiral math. And if you want to email that me separately later when we're done with the lesson, we can talk about that. We'll, we'll go into more detail about Minecraft on Thursday and give you some more details. All right, let's go ahead and go on down to, um, do you want to pick some, somebody who could answer the question for me? And then Hunter, be ready to tell me what the because was. I'd like to know why you chose that answer too. Jace P. Jace P. Could you go ahead and tell me what your question is? Or not your question, but could you tell me what you wrote as your answer here? Um, it is composite. It is com the number is composite. And um, Hunter, you had that because there. Tell me why you said because. Why is that number composite? Because it has multiple factors. I love how you said that. That's a great way. It has more factors than just 16 times one. So you could say it has multiple factors or factors other than itself in one. Many different ways to say that. Um, so the big thing I want to see here in the answer sense 
if you said anything be after the word composite, like because that is a star for extra credit when we start doing that, but I want you to get in the habit of giving yourself stars when you earn them. If you said composite, check to make sure you spell that correctly. And then also go ahead and make sure you check the word number to make sure you have that. Henry, what's your question? Henry, while you're getting your hand down, I'm just going to go ahead and ask Maisie to unmute her um, microphone. Your question? Does that count on the my homework too? Like the my homework, like the lesson two and everything that we do? It counts on the spiral math. Oh. So it just counts for spiral math. JC? Um, I wrote it's composite, but I didn't write because and where the number is. And that's fine. Um, make sure that you add the number is next time in your answer sentence. Because it's just something extra that Hunter did. So when we do a little extra above and beyond, if you guys did do that and explain why it's composite, that's extra credit for that one. So that's good to see. Henry, do you want to go ahead and unmute your microphone? I see your microphone's unmuted, so you can go ahead and uh, what would you like to say? Um, um, how do you get the extra credit? Um, Henry, on this one, what we did is because, and this was just because Hunter went above and beyond in the sense, he explained why the number was composite. So because he explained it like that, we're going to give him a little bit of extra credit and anyone extra credit um, because they went above and beyond on the answer. Okay. All right, thanks. Uh, Gabby? On that one, I sort of did the same thing, but I didn't put it in my answer sentence. Instead of doing numbers on the side, I like explained it for my work. If you explain it to me, Gabby, that's the same thing. So that's fine. Give yourself a star for that one, okay? And Jacob, one more thing. Um, I kind of I did the same thing as Hunter. I just realized that. I just no. realized and I no. just gave myself a star. Okay. Well, I'm glad you noticed what you did your work on. So that's good. So go ahead and give yourself a star. We're gonna move on right now, boys and girls. So go ahead and let's take a look at number seven now. All right. And what are we working on with number seven? Carter. Carter, do you want to go ahead and unmute your mic and just tell me what we're doing for number seven? List all the factors of 32. You got it. We're going to be listing all the factors of 32. So um, what would be a good answer sentence for that one then? Alex. Alex, you want to tell me what a good answer sentence would be for this? Alex, I see your microphone's unmuted. Are you able to get on? OK, um, Alex, if you're able to get back on, just go ahead and uh, raise your hand and let me know. But in the meantime, I'm going to be asking um, Maisie. Maisie to go ahead and tell me what the um, answer sentence she would say. Um, I wrote the factors of 32 are Perfect. Short and sweet. That's all you need to put in your answer sentence. So the factors of 32 are, and I'll leave some space here for the factors. Over on this side, I want to do a factor. I want to list out those factors here, or actually I'm going to have um, let's see if I get someone else to list those for me. So on this side, you could have listed your factors and wrote out your factors that you need. I'm going to call somebody to just list out the factors on this side and see if you agree with what they have on there. If there's something that we left out, we need to add in there, you let me know. I'm going to just go ahead and ask one person to tell me the factors of 32. Carter, you have a question? Yeah, um, it's not really a question, but I would just want to ask if it's okay if I put these are all the factors of 32 and then I listed them. That's fine. That's fine too. As long as you have those words, the keywords I want to see here, Carter, are factors and 32 in whatever you use to represent that answer. That's the most important thing. Okay. And uh, Henry, you got a question? Could I tell you the factors of 32? You know what? I was going to pick from the popsicle jar, but you know what? 
I think the popsicle jar was going to be picking Henry. So perfect. This is quite a coincidence today. So all right. All right. Go ahead, Henry. Give me those factors. Fact, the factors of 32 are 1, 8, 4, and Wait, 32. Henry, Henry, you're going, you are like super fast on that. So go ahead and say it to me really slow so I can write it down. I don't want to get lost on it. The factors are 1, 4, and 32. 1, 4. You said something before that. You think you left one out. You had said something and then, so 1, 4. Uh, Originally, I said one eight four thirty two, but then I re um, recognized the mistake. Actually, that's okay. We always do them in numbered order from least to greatest. So we have one times thirty two, four times eight is thirty two as well. Um, boys and girls, do you see any other? Do you agree, or is there anything else that we could add to Henry's answer that um, I might have left out here? We might have had. I just want to see if there's anything else. Um, I noticed a couple of people had their hand raised, so I wonder if there's something we should add in there. Kate, is there anything else we could add to Henry's answer here? Um, yeah, you could do 16 and that 16 and 2. Okay, so maybe what I'll do is I'll rewrite this here. I'll have 1 and 32, 2 and 16, 4 and 8. And then I'll put a comma between the 8 and 16. So I have 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. Is there anything I left out of this one, boys and girls? I think that's everything. Um, Audrey, uh, put your hand down if you think we've got it all done. I've, just keep your hand up if there's anything else you left out in here. I think that's all of them. Okay, good. Yeah, I think we got all those factors in there. So I'm going to make sure I check those. And uh, good job, Henry. Thank you for adding that extra factors in there. Kate, and let's go ahead and move on down to our final one, which is number eight. All right, let me just minimize this so we can see. Oh no, it's addition or subtraction again, which has been my nemesis. That means enemy lately with borrowing. So I wanna make sure that you guys are watching to make sure that I don't make any borrowing mistakes this time. So I'm gonna work this one out to get the right answer. Annabelle. Annabelle, tell me what we're gonna be doing with subtraction today. What are we doing with number eight? Just read and tell me. Um, do you want me to read the top thing? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Subtract, use addition to check. Okay, so we definitely want to make sure that when I am done subtracting, we are going to check over here by addition in my work to make sure that I didn't make any mistakes. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and write it out. And boys and girls, I need everyone to be eagle-eyed. So I'm going to write this and then we'll zoom in once I write it down. Check to make sure that I do not make any more subtracting errors because it's been kind of embarrassing <laughs> lately by doing this. So I want to make sure you guys catch them. So we're going to write down here. 3,203 subtract 1,015. Annabelle, you have a question? Um, Don't forget to write the dollar signs before the um, you know numbers too. Yeah, don't forget to write the dollar signs before the numbers Okay, two. I'm going to put those right in there too to make sure I have my unit of dollars in there. And that's a good observation. I'm going to go and subtract. I'm going to take well, I can't really borrow from, I can't use three, so I'm going to borrow from here, make that a nine. That becomes 13 minus five. Now I had to borrow from here to get that to make it, so I'm going to make this a one now. So it'll become 13 minus five is eight. Nine minus one is also eight. One minus zero is one. And three minus one is two. All right, now I want to check to make sure I didn't make any tragic subtracting errors this time by adding these two together. My difference plus the number that I was subtracting from, or the number that I was subtracting. So I'll take 1,015 plus 2,188. Five plus eight is 13. Two, so it's 10, carry the one, becomes two. Don't have to carry anything, one plus two is three. So now I have 3,203, and that's the same. Oh, yay. These are the same numbers, so that means that it's a good sign that I did not make any mistakes this time, which is always a good thing. So we're going to go ahead right now and just write it over here in our answer section, just to say that 3,203 dollars subtract, I'll put a subtraction sign, or a dollar sign, 1,015 is equal to 2,000 
$88. Make sure that you're checking your work, both the subtracting and the adding, and your final answer over here. All right, Carter. I put an answer sentence on this one, I'm and I said um, the difference of $3,203 and $1,015 is $2,188. Yeah, if you wrote that out as an answer sentence like that, that's fine. Saying the word difference in there is totally fine to do that, so you can do that as well too. Uh, Gab, you have a question? Yeah, he took mine. Okay, Derek, did you have a question? OK, I'm just going to go ahead and move on here to our. Um, agenda, I want to make sure that I've got what's next. OK, we reviewed our spiral math for today. Um, we oh boy, we are running a little late on our um, schedule that. Uh, the sound thing kind of moved, messed everything up, but we're OK. We're going to be reviewing our. Um, math homework, I would like to give you a break for a little bit before we review it, so let's do a two minute break. I'm not going to ask you to leave the meeting right now. I'm just going to ask you at 930 to come back to the meeting. So you don't have to leave the meeting, but you can get up at your house, walk around, stretch for a little bit, and in two minutes or one minute or so, come on back and then we'll go over the math homework. So what we'll do is stay in the meeting. Um, we're going to start at 930 and then you can take a little stretch break, stand up, and make sure you're back at 930 to give us a chance to go over our homework. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll pull up the homework and get those ready to go and we'll start in about a minute. Derek, did you have a question still or are your hand still up? Abby, you have a question? Reagan, do you have a question? Yeah, for when we you, on the agenda, it says the flip grid of the math. Do you want us to do that paper that we just went through and show you on the Flipgrid or like the Flipgrid we're going to do today? The, um, sorry, the math homework we're going to do today. Um, the math homework we're going to do today. Some days, um, if we're still virtual, I'm going to ask you to um, show me your spiral math so I can see that. But for today, I just want to check, uh, do a Flipgrid about the math homework. Allison? I... I have to leave for my doctor's appointment. OK, and um, your mom gave me a heads up about that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to st I stop this recording.